this is the second example of isometric、uh, view drawing. This is a little bit more complicated. So on the left hand side again, I have the three standard orthographic views of this part, and you can tell that this part looks like a, some kind of a platform with a cylindrical feature and with a big through hole here and a smaller through hole here. Okay,、um, so imagine you have this table and with a cylinder in the center. So before you do any kind of drawing, you need to be able to visualize the three D part in your head. You need to be confident that you understand what this part looks like. So again, I have the front view here, top view here, and the right view here. And、um, on these drawings, I do have the dimensions, and they are in the units of、uh, millimeter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to Transform the dimensions onto my isometric grid paper, and、uh, I need to do a little bit of scaling. I'm going to use one grid size to be twenty、uh, millimeter. Therefore,、um, my longest dimension here, three sixty millimeter, becomes eighteen grid side on my paper, and then the height here, that's overall one hundred and twenty millimeter, becomes six grid. Here, and the 160 millimeter, which is also this part right here, that's the width,、um, becomes eight grids. Okay, so with that, I'm going to draw this box on my isometric paper. So this box right here has the the length that's 18 grid side, and this defines the front wall. Okay, front plane of the part. And the top here, it has the same length, but with a width of、um, eight grids right here. That's the top plane, and this right here is the right plane. This step is optional. You don't have to start with a box. I personally think this is a great way to help you visualize、um, three-dimensional space from your two-dimensional paper. So now these. Walls define the boundaries for my drawing. So the three-dimensional drawings I'm going to make is going to sit inside this box. It's not going to go beyond this box. Okay. So with that done, what I'm going to do next? I like to draw whatever visible lines that are actually on the front wall, top wall, and right wall first. So I want to draw these outer lines first. Okay, so once again, if you look at the front view right here, even though you see many、uh, visible lines, but only this part right here, only this part, is actually on the front wall. You see this rectangle here, and then this rectangle here, but you can tell from the top view, these are actually not straight edges. They are a little bit inside because it's circular. It's the the wall of a cylinder. Okay, so this part right here onto my、uh, front wall, making sure the positions of the lines are correct and the dimensions are correct. So what's next? I'm going to draw whatever is on the right、uh, wall. So from the right view, again you see multiple. Lines, including some hidden lines, but only this part right here is actually on the right wall. This、uh, square corresponds to this surface right here, this edge right here. Okay, so draw that on your right wall. And then what's left to do is to draw what's on the top wall. So from the top view, again you have to read. The the views、uh, in relation with each other, but you can tell that there's this ring right here. There's a ring shape. That's the only thing that is actually on the top wall. So I'm going to draw that first. So in order to draw circle on your isometric paper, you are actually drawing、uh, ovals. So what you do is you draw a little window with the center of the circle and then also the Outer diameter of the circle. You draw a little square right here. Okay. 
transform that onto the isometric paper because drawing straight lines uh, are, uh, is easier than drawing ovals right away. So that's what I did. Making sure you have the correct center and also correct the diameter. So this line right here and this line right here correspond to the diameters of the circle. And then uh, if you're drawing by hand, you just draw a, a one quarter at a time to just do your best to draw an oval but because I'm using PowerPoint so it's nicer this way so that's the outer circle right here and don't forget you have an inner circle and you draw it the same way draw a little window with the correct center and the correct diameter to outline uh, what this is where this oval is going to be and then inside, just try to draw the oval one quarter at a time until you have this nice oval that represents of a full circle. Okay. So now that's all I have on my outer walls. There's no other lines that are actually on the outer walls. So I have no choice. I have to start drawing the more difficult parts. Uh, but at this point, I actually don't need um, my construction lines because I already have my um, outer surfaces defined. I like to draw it in the order from top to bottom, so following some kind of order. Therefore, the next thing I'm going to do is to draw on this surface, this plane right here, and if you wonder where that is, that corresponds to this surface. Okay, So I'm going to draw whatever is happening on this surface. So on this surface, you still have a portion of the circle and also you have this circle right here is completely on this surface okay so in order to do that you need to first identify uh, the 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 center of the bigger cir circle okay so you do that using the center of the big circle that you already drawn and then count how many grids you have to move okay so from here from this top surface to this surface right here you can read that's a, di a dimension of 60 millimeter which corresponds to three grids okay so now we know that we're going to move the center down by three grids okay so one two three once again, one, two, three. So I move the center down by three grids. Okay. And then I recreate my window here with the center here. As you can see, I did not recreate a full window because that's not necessary. Uh, I already know some part will be hidden. So I don't, I'm not going to draw this part right here. The outer circle is not going to show up here. So I'm going to draw basically not a full circle, but a three-quarter circle uh, with the correct center location, with the correct um, uh, diameter. Okay, So that's where this circle is. It's on, again, on this platform right here. All right, And of course, right now it doesn't look right um, because we know that we have to have vertical edges here to give you the outline of the cylinder so from the top to bottom i'm going to draw two straight lines and if you are curious how i determine the positions of the straight lines making sure these two straight lines are tangent to the circles okay and now it looks more realistic i need to get rid of this portion and this portion so now this is my cylinder Okay, and with this cylinder drawn, you can actually fill out the square, the shape right here. Okay, I did not draw them earlier because I know that some portion is hidden by the cylinder, so I wanted to draw the cylinder first. But we're not done yet because, like I said, on this same platform, I still have a smaller circle, so. In order to do that, again, I need two things. I need the center position and I need the diameter. Okay, So the diameter of this circle is overall 60 millimeter, which is going to be three grids on my drawing. 
Therefore, the radius is going to be 1.5 grid on my drawing. But what about the center? Okay. So to determine the center, I'm using this uh, window again because I'm using the window to help me determine how much, how many grids I need to move in what direction in order to arrive at the new center. So first of all, this plane again is a 60 millimeters lower or three grids lower. So I'm going to again repeat what I did earlier. I'm going to lower the center by three grids. And then if you look at this dimension, so from here to here, that is 120 millimeter, which translates to six grids along that direction, six grids along this direction. So from here, I'm going to move in this direction by six grids. And this point right here is the center of the smaller circle. Okay. So now I'm going to draw my little window with the correct diameter. And then here I'm going to draw this oval that represents that circle. Okay. Now, because it's a circle, it's a hole. And because if you look at this thickness, this is a small thickness. Okay. So what's going to happen is that the lower edge of the circle is probably visible in this circle. And many students forget about that. We don't know for sure, but let's let's find out. So what's going to happen right now is that I'm actually going to draw this circle on the lower surface of this platform. Okay. So once again, what I'm trying to do is I'm going to draw this circle right here. So using this little green window, I know that the center is um, lowered by one more grid. That's another 20 millimeter, which is one more grid. So I'm going to lower that by one more grid. Okay. And redraw my window right here. So this is where I would draw the lower circle. But remember, I'm only going to draw the portion that's visible from the top. Therefore, I'm only going to draw this portion right here. So it's the same practice, but I'm only going to draw a small portion of it. So now it looks realistic. So I can see a portion of the lower edge uh, from the top. So what I'm going to do right now is that I will keep going lower and draw this edge right here. So whatever is happening on this surface. Okay. Um, there is again a portion of the circle down there because as you can tell this is cylinder this is cylinder go all the way to the bottom okay therefore I'm going to use the same method I'm going to use the center of my very top surface circle and I'm going to move that center down to find the center of my uh, lower circle on the bottom and I know that um, the diameter is the same. Okay, so I just need to find the center. So from here to here, that's again 120 millimeter, which is six grids. So from this center, I'm going to move down one, two, three, four, five, six. So this point is going to be my new center. Okay, so I move the little window down here. Okay, and I'm going to draw the circle again but I only draw the visible part. And if you examine what we've already drawn, you will realize that the visible part will be from here to here. And also don't forget, there's a little bit inside here that you can actually see. So a little bit inside here that you can see. So I'm going to draw this line first and I'm going to remove the, the lines that are not visible. So right here, there's actually a, a a straight edge here okay because again the outline of the the cylinder is a straight so i'm going to fill in that little straight line this little black line here and then i'm going to erase everything else okay so i'm almost done the last thing is to make sure you're filling this line right here at the bottom and that's it 
you examine it, it looks realistic, it looks correct, it agrees with uh, your understanding of this part from reading the um, orthographic views, and this is your final drawing.